This is Mayor Pro Temp Victor Farfand, and I'm here today uh, with various members of the community, the VFW, um, various veterans, um, here to put together the wall that heals. I mean, this is a very special moment in our city's history, being that we have been selected for 2023 to host the wall that heals. So we're inviting members of the community, local um, cities, and anyone that wants to come out and pay homage to those individuals that were lost in the Vietnam War. Um, so right now, as you see behind me, we have the actual setup process that's taking place. We have everyone coming out, putting you know their work together so that uh, we're making this event come come to life. And as you see over the next couple of days, it will you know actually have the the wall, and members of the community will be able to come out and, and see what it looks like. So we're inviting everyone to come out and do their part to, to participate and take advantage of this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the community of Hawaiian Gardens. My name is Mike Laughlin. I'm a resident of the city of Hawaiian Gardens and a member of the Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 7243 here in Hawaiian Gardens. I was blessed to be asked to bring this wall to Hawaiian Gardens. And we got it here last week on Tuesday we set it up in the rain with 50 volunteers, mostly Vietnam veterans. We got it put together. It's open 24 hours a day for all of the residents, all of the veterans, all the people that want to come and visit, commune with their family members that are on the wall, those 58,000 names. Hi, my name is Rodney Gonsalves. I'm site manager with the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, and we travel with the Wall That Heals. The Wall That Heals is a three-quarter scale replica of the wall that's in Washington, D.C. We travel around the country, the continental United States, to bring that experience to those that not, are not able to go to Washington, and we bring it to their communities, and we honor those veterans and those that had paid the ultimate sacrifice, as well as those that served, survived, and came home. We want to honor everyone that served during the Vietnam era. The whole step to uh, con constructing this is once we have our mobile education center, which is the, tr the trailer that transports all of our equipment, we put that in place. The first thing that we do is, with our, the help of our volunteers, many of our volunteers, we start constructing the wall. Most of our volunteers were Vietnam era veterans, which means they're in their 70s, and we could not have done it without them. They were adamant that they were going to accomplish the mission, and it was a difficult time for us because it was raining that day, so we had uh, issues with the weather, along with the distance that they had to, had to travel carrying those heavy panels. We had men and women that were helping us, regardless of their age, but with the help of them, we were able to accomplish the mission. It was an honor to work with them. Once we have the frames together and aligned horizontally and vertically, we then begin bringing out the, the panels which have the names of the 58,281 service members that paid the ultimate sacrifice. The last phase that we do is putting up the lights because it's open 24 hours a day once we construct it. Okay, I'm with the VFW Post 1961 from Gardena. And how do you feel about what's happening today? Oh, I really feel honored helping. Uh, this came to Gardena about five years ago when I helped. So it was kind of a nice experience. Hi, I'm Judy Deaton from Huntington Beach, California, and we're here in Hawaiian Gardens building the Memorial Wall, the wall that heals the Vietnam Memorial Traveling Wall for you to come look at and for you to find names on it of um, missing or killed in action loved ones. We have escorts for the tour. You can look up names and be escorted to where that name is on the wall. As well as building the wall, we also have our mobile education center, which has canopies along the side. So that's a, another process in itself. Now once the wall is set up, the Mobile Education Center turns into a museum which, uh, where we have items on display and we'll conduct the tours usually starting over there. U.S. Navy, Vietnam veteran, I'm very proud to be serving here and helping out with this Vietnam Wall. Thank you. Hey, I'm from uh, West uh, Whittier, my name is Richard Alvarez. Uh, I really like helping out here because I got friends on the wall. We, we, we lost like 27 guys over there in Vietnam. and. To me, I feel like I'm doing this and honoring them. I am doing this and honoring them. And for people to be able to come here and see the wall, all the veterans, it's just a feeling when you see your friends that they're being honored. It, it, it helps you out to realize like when we came home, they didn't uh, give us a parade or nothing. They didn't care about us. This shows that they care, especially for those who've gone before us. They are the heroes, the ones that were there. And I'm just so thankful that I'm able to do this. And I'm thankful for 
you doing this interview and uh, talking to people. The reason we have this wall traveling is because not everyone has the ability to get to Washington, D.C., where the original wall is. And this is an opportunity for the veterans who served in Vietnam and came home to heal. I have been with hundreds of veterans who walk in hunched over, stoop-shouldered, shuffling, breathing deep, scared, and come and touch the names of those they lost and walk away with their shoulders back, their head held high, with a weight lifted off of them that they've been carrying since they were in Vietnam. My name is Ronald Jean Spray, <clears throat> retired lieutenant colonel from the United States Air Force. I flew Jolly Green helicopters in Vietnam and rescued 17 people. And on the wall, we've got six, seven people that uh, passed away during the time that I was over there in 1968. Uh, it was a good, good tour, but at the same time, I'm glad to home and not on that wall. And appreciate it. Thank you. What's the most, ex uh, what's the most memory you have during the world that kept with you all the time? Some of the mem one memory, maybe. Well, away from the war, <laughs> the uh, Coast Guard had arranged for a Vietnamese girl who was blind to be taken out to the USS Sanctuary, which was the hospital ship in the, uh, off the coast of Hue. <laughs> and she was there for quite a while, and then lo and behold, in comes the ice, or comes in like the eye, frozen on ice, and we flew it up to the sanctuary as well and her, they replaced her eye, and I understand she was able to see again. That was a good memory. These people that you see uh, here against the fence, they are all Hawaiian Gardens uh, uh, veterans. Uh, even though some are listed as from Lakewood or Artesia, in those days it was just wherever they were inducted from, but all of them were Hawaiian Gardens. And having being a nine-tenths of a square mile of the city, can you imagine losing 12, 12 of our youth here? Um, so it's kind of sad. Uh, uh, during my time and a couple of years later, almost everybody here in Hawaii Gardens was drafted. There was very few that didn't go because of some kind of uh, uh, illnesses or uh, injuries or something, but Almost every, everybody between 66 and, and 69, almost everybody here in the city of Hawaiian Gardens, they were drafted. And they served either uh, Vietnam, Korea, or uh, uh, Europe. So our town here is uh, very, pretty well represented as, uh, with the armed forces. Some are Army, uh, Air Force, Navy. So it's kind of sad to look at the pictures of our friends here because most of us, oh, we all knew each other here during that time. And uh, so it's, uh, it's very sad to, to see our, our friends here. Hi, my name is Carmela Moha. I am resident of Hawaiian Gardens. This is taking my breath away to see so many of our boys, actually kids that gave their lives for us. And we have to bring our country up to standard again so we couldn't make their dying not in vain because they died for our country. This is a wonderful thing and sad and heartbreaking. And everybody should come out and be here to see this, to know what actually went on and how many of our boys died and women too. Thank you. How do you, does it make you feel that when you see the picture from the, the fallen, the heroes from Hawaiian Gardens? It breaks your heart. It doesn't matter where they're from, it breaks your heart. Today we were here to honor the 12 residents of Hawaiian Gardens who left Hawaiian Gardens as boys, went to a hostile foreign land, became men, and then lost their lives, sacrificing it in service to our country. We had many dignitaries here honoring all of these young men, and we had some of the family members here, and we hope that they 
feel that we honored them for their service and their sacrifice. And again, they will never be forgotten. We have their names inscribed on the monument in, by City Hall. Hello, I'm Council Member Ernie Vargas. We're here at Fetty Middle School where we are at the uh, Wall of Healing, which is the Vietnam Memorial Wall. And I'm uh, here uh, with my brother who served in Vietnam. Uh, this is Albert. And um, so maybe I can ask you a few questions, Al. Uh, so what year did you go into the service? You went to, I remember we drove you all the way up to, uh, uh, where was that, Fort Ord? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I was 17 when I enlisted. I should have stayed in school. My objective was to get my GED, and I did get that. Uh, I was supposed to go uh, clerical, but I had to hook up a plow and a mosquito. You don't ask no questions; you just hook it up. So I ended up going to Vietnam. So I, I went. So. So after after Fort Ord, you went to some training back in the south. Jungle training in Louisiana, Fort Fort Polk. Fort Polk, and then I was I was still 17, but when I came on my leave, I became 18, old enough to go. So that was my orders were cut. So there I am. Okay, so then you went. You went to Vietnam, uh, and what year was that? June 68, June 69. So you were there for one year? Sure, for one year. And then you served uh, one year in all the training, and then one year in Vietnam? Exactly, two years. I uh, served at the Delta Dragon 6 at 31st, uh, 2nd Platoon, 9th Division, mm -hmm. out in Ken Phung Province, Ken, Ken Tung Dong Tam. Uh, that was the area that our units operated out of. And you were the 9th Division? 9th Deputy, Deputy Division, the 31st Regiment. 6th okay. Bat, six bat, 31st. Yeah, let me ask you one question. Uh, do you know some of the names that's on the wall? Anybody? Oh, gosh, yes. I've got the names on my wallet. Uh, we had two soldiers that were killed in action. Uh, if not for these two soldiers and, and God, I don't think our platoon element would have made it. We got overrun. Uh, it was spec for James Barrios out of Lemoore, California. And then there was Calvin Wild Thang Robinson out of South Carolina. Uh, both these servicemen, they held they held their positions while we had to pull back because we had a lot of guys who got a hit. And uh, they stayed with the 60, and they were they they took a hit from an RPG, and they were both killed. But uh, they held off of the enemy for as long as they they could, and we were able to pull back. But uh, they they both we put them up for Medal of Honor, but they got the Distinguished Service Cross. And at this moment, we have some soldiers that were for the first platoon that got wiped out. They're still they're still around, and I would like to see these soldiers have their 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 uh, their certificates updated to to DSC. My name is Nayeli. Um, I think this is a really incredible project. That um, you know, as it says, it's a wall that heals. I had three of my tios. They um, were drafted. Two of them. Uh, survived the war one of them did not so his name is on the wall and I just got one of my own etchings but I have a lot of family here today and it's kind of something that we all like to do together to just kind of have an excuse to see each other but also kind of help other people who um, have suffered a loss from the Vietnam War. What we do is we have a tour starting at our mobile education center. The mobile education center is the trailer that transports all of our equipment. Now once the wall is set up the mobile education center turns into a museum which, uh, w where we have items on display, and we'll conduct the tours usually starting over there. Some of the items that we have, and regardless of how big or small items that were left behind at the wall, there's a story and a feeling and history behind everything, regardless of how big or small. One of the items that I'd like to talk about, which includes leadership, is a set of four stars. Now, back then during the, the Vietnam era, there was a lieutenant who was in charge of a platoon. He's called a platoon commander. His unit was involved in a major battle and he lost one of his Marines. But he never forgot about his Marine the entire time because he stayed in the Marine Corps and got promoted through the ranks all the way up to the Four Star General, which is high as you can go. After the wall was built, he went to where his Marine's name was and he placed those four stars with a note, always remembering his, remembering his Marine. So he never lost sight of him and uh, it meant a lot for him to, to stay spiritually, spiritually connected with his Marine. We brought students from all of the schools in ABC Unified School District because we want them to learn the real, true, honest story from veterans, from people who were there, about the service and sacrifice that all of those men and women made. 
and hope that they take away the emotional impact and the real sacrifice that was made and with that I hope that they take away the idea that next time we have a conflict with another country they look at these 58,000 names behind me and say to themselves there has to be a better way we cannot take our best and brightest of this great country and sacrifice them in war these students were coming in gay and laughing and joking and walking away many of them very very humbled very somber and that some of them I was surprised at the honest reactions and the questions they asked they were very very poignant very deep in many ways and these are junior high school and high school students I am very confident that those students will lead our country in the future and that this will be part of their training for when they become the leaders of our country. My name is David Lucas and I'm here at Fetty Middle School and I feel sad for the people because they, they lost, the fa their families lost their family and I feel bad for them so it must have been a hard time dealing with that and the war is just really depressing in general. My name is Brandon Remigio and I am here at the to honor the wall. Uh, when I heard that 246 people died on 1968 daily um, it made me feel really sad because that could be someone's brother or father and I just can't imagine myself in that situation. What does it make you feel when you see all these names? Um, it makes me feel like just really like sad for the those families who had to go through this and wake up and not know if your father or your brother has died in this war that was not really popular or no one liked so i didn't know that a 14 year old was there but it kind of makes me proud that there was a 15 year old who wanted to serve for the country and it made me proud that there was somebody out there, very young, who served for this country and fought for our freedom. My name is Odalis Ramirez. I'm from Fetty Middle School. And um, when I see the wall, I get honestly really scared because I can only imagine how scared these people were risking their lives for their country. And I think it's really sad because a lot of people, they miss their, they miss their uncles, their brothers, their fathers and some people don't even know where their relatives went or their loved ones. So it makes me really sad seeing the wall and all of the names that are on there. When I see women's name on the wall, uh, I kind of feel proud because back then it, was, um, it wasn't a common thing, but it also, again, it makes me feel really sad because you know, a lot of people really, they lost people that they really loved and sometimes they didn't even know where they went. Um, but overall, I think it's, it's nice that they incorporated women in the Vietnam War. Hi, my name is Chad Lanes, and we're here at the replica of the Vietnam Memorial Wall. We're here at Fetty Middle School. I thought it was really important to bring my students out here. Although this isn't content that we teach in 7th and 8th grade, the message and the lessons that can be learned are important for anybody. I do not remember Vietnam War myself. I'm, I'm not that old. But I do remember my parents talking about it. I actually remember the feel in the home as they would watch the broadcast on TV. And um, it was an uncomfortable feeling in the home, for sure. When teaching my students about war and talking about peace, I like to tell them contextually, like, what were the reasons why? I like to place them in the feet of the people that were actually there to experience it, uh, sort of virtually to think about what it might have been like to be there um, by supplying the different facts around those historical events I think that's more meaningful to them if they could actually like feel walking through the jungles feel having to watch your comrades go down those are the things that really resonate with kids I'm so happy that Hawaiian Guards was chosen to host this replica of the Vietnam Memorial Wall. I'd like to thank all those people who are a part of making that happen. And of course, I'd like to thank the veterans for their service in fighting for our country. My name is Council Member Dandy DiPaola of the City of Wine Gardens. Standing here brings out a lot of um, sentiment and emotion. Just the contrast of the struggle that the, this 58,281 
service members that endured and the life that we enjoy these days there's the price that they paid that the ultimate sacrifice of dying for our freedom brings a lot of joy that we are experiencing these days i'm um, seeing these students um, it's so meaningful because they get to do um, a tour but at the same time they have a glimpse of of these service members who have given up their lives for the sake of our freedom. My name is Xavier Morales. I go to Fetty Middle School and me seeing this wall is actually crazy. I've never seen this many people's names on a board and I expect to see more people here during the night. They were talking about how it would light up and I would like to see that. I'm STG1 Jason Gamble with the United States Navy. Um, I feel honored to be here to look at this monument of, of, of our fallen heroes. Uh, it inspired me as far as one of the reasons to join the military, particularly the Navy. Uh, it's been an incredible journey, five years with the United States Navy, and just being in this space amongst those names written on, on the monument of the wall who served in the Vietnam War. I, I don't have words to say, but truly profound, deep respect for those fallen heroes. My name is John Peters. I'm originally from Massachusetts. I moved to California in September of 1977. I've been doing this wall for about 12 years. I have uh, five men from my unit, from the 11th Brigade and Mercal Division. And there's also a gentleman on the wall, Freddie Perkins, who sat across from me in high school for three years. I've been doing the traveling walls for about 12 years. I've been all the way down to San Diego and up to San Jose. This wall will go to 24 states and 32 different cities around the United States. The count right now for casualties for men is 58,281 and we have eight women. We never had any women POWs or MIAs. The ladies were all nurses. There was one woman who was actually uh, a, a combat uh, casualty. She was killed in a motor attack at the, in the Chulai village. Uh, that was in uh, June of 1969. And the, they dedicated a wing of the hospital in Denver in her name. Each panel has a number and a letter, and they start from 1955 and go all the way up to 1975. The war lasted for a little over 19 years. Uh, altogether total, at one point, uh, the height of the war in 1969, we had 543,482 men and women serving in country. And then it finally was over sometime in uh, April 4th of 1975. The one common name that people ask me all the time, they want to know about different names, is Smith, S-M-I-T-H. We have 667 men whose name was Smith. We have a lot of different visitors. Uh, we have people from a lot of different countries. There's a large population of Vietnamese people in the city of Westminster here in California. And we've had people from all this. There was a total of 220 different uh, cities and countries that were represented on the wall. We had uh, 226 men who were actually born on Indian reservations. They were full-blooded Indians and they came to join the military. A lot of those men went into combat units, uh, infantry, artillery, uh, paratroopers, rangers, different like that. We have people from uh, 21 different countries that our names are on this wall. So the United States, not only were we doing the, the main work in the, in the, uh, the war itself, but uh, we had a lot of people who helped out as allies that came and went. Oh, we had uh, uh, Catholics and uh, Protestants and Jews and Baptists and different people, different nationalities, Asian American, uh, African American, and uh, different people from different backgrounds. When people are visiting, the best thing for them to do is to come from the be start at the beginning, either on the east side or the west side. We have 140 panels altogether, 70 on the east and 70 on the west. Now, the biggest misconception that people have is it's not alphabetical order. The casualties are by day and date. And there's a map and a printout that will show you what, what uh, wall, part of the wall that you can go to to fill in for the name that you're looking for. We have people here that uh, have listings of the books and it tells you which wall and which section and which line to look for. My name is Erlinda Dung, 
This is a president of the uh, Vietnamese community of Southern California. Today, very honored to be here to uh, do the um, veteran welcome home to uh, U.S. veteran and Vietnamese veteran. I remember the time I still live in the, my country. I'm a little girl, but I feel like freedom country with the beautiful country. Um, but later, uh, the communists come and so um, we had to come here and now uh, we will appreciate about yourself, uh, U.S. Uh, veteran and Vietnamese veteran for the war. And uh, today, very honored and very, uh, had a very good feeling to come here. And uh, thank you everyone. I can see um, all veteran people and uh, I'm very thank you. My name is Joe Juarez and I just turned 100 years old. I was in the Army in the 1st Cavalry 12th Division and served in the South Pacific. This is just a tremendous, it brings me a lot of memories. And uh, I just told them, the, the, there, there are the, the ones that didn't make it. There's the heroes. We're just a part of it. And but they're the ones that they, they, they're the ones who did, did for all this country and also us. But nevertheless, they, they're, they are the they are the ones to be honored. My name is Carolina Hernandez. I'm the Public Affairs of Veterans Stand Together. And I'm also a Navy veteran and I'm a fashion designer. So today I brought my models here wearing the tiger print uh, stripe uh, dresses to honor this event. So meaningful that is not only for me, but for all the veterans that are here. And we're here to honor all the men and women who have served during the Vietnam era. Thank you so much. My name is Dan Vasquez, Daniel Vasquez. I served with the 4th Infantry Division 1966-67. I was wounded July 23rd, 1967. Spent approximately four months in the hospital in country, which was uh, mostly in convalescent, 97th convalescent in Cameron Bay. Um, it was just um, it's just an honor to be here to to see these fallen heroes. <laughs> very, <coughs> very, very emotional. <laughs> That's it. What this means to me as a Vietnam veteran who served in the Navy off the coast, 1972 and 1974, sending the river boats up the rivers and the Marines to the beaches, I get emotional thinking about these names, about these young men and women. And I get emotional when I think of my brothers and sisters who came back, but were the walking dead. They didn't know they were dead. Agent Orange, PTSD, alcohol, drugs, homelessness contributed to their death. We lose 22 a day to suicide because of their actions in Vietnam and what they encountered, what they dealt with. So for me, if I can make an impact, just one veteran make a change in their life by bringing them to this wall, every bit of the sacrifice that we've done, the city, the employees of the city, the uh, staff in the offices, the city council, ABC Unified School District, all of that sacrifice that we have done makes a difference in one life. It was worth every bit of it. For those of you that are interested in becoming a member of the armed services, we thank you, we honor you, because you are going to pick up the load that we carried and carry it forward to protect our country, to protect all the men and women that are behind you here in this country, looking to you to protect us and all that we hold dear. I'd like to say thank you to the City of Hawaiian Gardens for bringing the wall that heals to your community. It's been a true honor to work with those volunteers that put this together, that struggled, and it's been an honor to meet everyone that's been involved in this process. Hopefully, we've been able to touch the lives of many of those Vietnam veterans, as well as the family members, for those that had paid the ultimate sacrifice, or those that survived and are still living today, because we want to honor everyone.